بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على خير الذاكرين وأفضل الشاكرين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إخواني وأخواتي مشاهدين الكرام أحييكم بتحية الإسلام تحية الرسل الكرام فأقول السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم إلى حلقة جديدة في دروس في اللغة العربية My beloved brothers and sisters I greet you with the universal greeting of peace and I say to you Welcome to another episode of Durusun fi Lughatil Arabiya, Lessons in Arabic. Durusun fi Lughatil Arabiya is a weekly program that is brought to you from the stations of the Islamic Network. And this can be viewed from channels 7 at Gael and Flow, channel 10, Green Dot, and also you can have live streaming from the Islamic Network.org. We have been speaking, my beloved brothers and sisters, in this new series of Durusun Fil Lughat Al Arabiya about introduction and greetings. And we have also looked at the family members and we have looked at the conjugation of the verb. We looked at the perfect tense conjugation and in the last um, lesson we looked at the imperfect tense conjugation, but we did not look at the full conjugation. Today we will also not be looking at the complete conjugation of the imperfect tense. However, we will be doing a quick review of what we did in the previous session with regards to the imperfect tense conjugation only for the singular column. And as usual, you know that from this new series we have a list of Quranic vocabulary, which I'm sure by now you, have, you would have memorized the words that you have gotten. And also we looked at in the previous program at Surah Al-Fatiha and we have completed Surah Al-Fatiha and by now inshallah I hope that you have memorized all of the words of Surah Al-Fatiha. So as usual I will give you some time to get your paper, your pen and be right in front of your TV screen to take some very good notes inshallah in our program. got into an accident or just need to repair your vehicle, then worry no more. Visit Eric Alliance on Automotive and Transport Services Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. They do full professional body works using the latest and best equipment necessary to get the job done right. They also offer transport services. So visit Eric Alliance on Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. Or call 620-2873 or 655-2873. Mali's Restaurant Minimat and Poultry Depot. Conveniently located at the corner of Juman Street and Southern Main Road, California. At Madi's, we specialize in mouth-watering curry foods from Monday to Thursday and barbecue on Fridays and Saturdays. We also have the best prices in dry goods and poultry products, including halal chicken and duck. Open hours every day from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Contact Madi's Restaurant Minimat and Poultry Depot at 744-1857. Marhaban bikum. Welcome brothers and sisters as we continue with Durusun fi Lughatil Arabiya. In our previous program, we were looking at the conjugation of the imperfect tense verb. And as you can see from the board, we looked at the singular column. There is yet the dual column to be completed and also the plural column to be completed. 
As you would have realized, um, the, in the Arabic language has three numbers. So you have a singular, and then you have dual. Dual is not plural, okay, and plural. Dual means two. So two in Arabic is not plural. Two is just two. So that's why we have these three sections, singular, dual, and plural. So in the previous class, we were looking at the conjugation of the verb in the imperfect tense, the triliteral verb, that is the verb with only three letters, and we looked only at the singular column. And we would have observed from that class, the previous session, that if you have the verb, let's say for example, you have the verb vahaba, which means he went, vahaba. Vahaba means he went. So we want to know how do you say he goes or he will go or he just, you know, for the simple present tense or the present continuous, he's going or he will go. Okay, what do we do? We have the three letters of the verb, vahaba. These are the three letters here and you would have realized that the three letters have been repeated in the whole conjugation. All right, so what you'll have to remember is the prefix. And do not confuse when I say prefix and suffix, okay? The prefix means it is at the beginning of the word. And now you have to remember that Arabic is written from right to left. So when I say at the beginning of the word, the prefix, it means from the right side, okay? So do not confuse prefix and suffix. So for the masculine, singular, third person, which is he in English, which is he, we all, we, all we did was add the letter ya, okay? And then the vowels for the whole verb has been changed. So now it is yadhabu. Yadhabu means he goes or he is going or he will go. He will go. So the imperfect tense, as I've outlined previously, refers to the simple present tense, the present continuous tense, and the future tense, okay? So yadhabu, the translation of yadhabu can be he goes, he is going, or he will go, yadhabu, okay? What will differentiate one from the next? It is the context in which it is used. We will talk about that sometime later on, inshallah. So yadhabu, so aya was added. To differentiate the masculine from the feminine, you have the letter ta. So ta is different from ya. It's just shifting the dots on top. It changes the letter. So tadhabu means she. So she goes, she is going, or she will go. She. Singular, third person, feminine. Tadhabu. So yadhabu, he, and tadhabu is for she. Notice now, when we come to the second person, you, the singular, masculine, you, right? It is the same conjugation of the third person feminine, tadhabu, and it is tadhabu, you. So you, if you're addressing a male person, say tadhab, you go, all right? You're going, uh, you go, or you will go, tadhabu. So what will differentiate them, the feminine from the masculine here in this case? Again, the context, because the third person is you're talking about someone, the person is not present, the person is absent, whereas for the second person, the person is right in front of you, you are, you're addressing that person. So can, there can't be any confusion between, you know, you, who, you are address, who is being addressed, and someone you're talking about, okay? So the context will show the difference between what it means, whether it is she or it is you. Notice now for the feminine, it is tadhabina. So while we have the additional ta, as a prefix, we also have two letters coming to the end as a suffix, all right? So for the feminine, the feminine, we have a prefix and we also have the suffix. So it is tadhabin, tadhabina. So we just say tadhabin, we end with a sukun. We don't normally, you know, sound off the last vowel of the, you know, when we, in the spoken. We just say tadhabin. So tadhabin means you are going, you're talking to a female person. You go, you're going, or you will go. Tadhabin. And then we have adhabu. We have the alif. 
at the prefix, right? Adhabu means I go or I will go or I am going. Adhabu. Now, from this, if we want to negate the verb, all we need to do is to add the letter la. So if you say la, and then we say the verb again, it negates the verb. So yadhabu means he goes, or he will go, or he is going. La yadhab means he is not going, okay? Or he will not go. La yadhabu. La yadhabu. So just put la in front of the verb, any one of the conjugation, and it just negates it. La adhabu, I'm not going. La adhab, la. You have learned previously that ma negates the perfect tense, but la negates the imperfect tense. La negates the imperfect tense. Okay, so now if we want to come to the dual column, all right, we will just do a few of them. So we have ya, and then we have the letters of the verb, which, is, which are the val, the ha, and the ba. Okay, and then because it is dual, one of the, the ways actually of making something dual is to add the suffix of alif and noon. So we just add an alif and a noon, a kesra. So it's yadhabani. So yadhabu is one, singular, it's he, but yadhabani it's two. All right, two going, yadhabani. Now the alif and the noon as the suffix is the same style or pattern or rule when you want to make a noun, a singular noun, the dual, okay? And for example, if you have the word, uh, let's say, column, which means a pen, column means a pen, okay, and you want to say two pens, the Arabs don't ever use the number, they don't say ifnan and then call the item, the object, so they don't say ifnan column, no, they take the singular and then they add an alif and noon to the end of it, so from the word column, now tanwin can only come at the end of a word, so tanwin disappears, and then the alif is added, and the noon, qalamani. So qalamani means two pen. Now this here is a nang. Okay, it's a nang, but this is a verb, verb. So the verb is actually doing the same thing like the nang. When it is dual, you have alif and noon for the verb, just like the nang. Okay, so you have qalaman. So, yadhaban, yadhaban means they are going, they, two, but only two people. They are going, or they go, or they will go. Okay, yadhabani. And if it is feminine, look across here, feminine is I should make the val as black because the val is part of the verb. Have. And then we have the elephant noon to make it dual. So it's tadhabani. Tadhabani. So tadhabani means to. Okay, two going, two female going. And you have for the masculine and the feminine, the same thing and the same thing. Tadhaban. All right? Tadhaban. You. Okay? You are going to two people because it's dual and it is second person. All right? You go, you are going, or you will go. The same thing, the identical thing. So this one plus this one and this one, all of them, they are the same. 
So I will only do the dual form today. Our next class, inshallah, we'll be looking at the plural. All right, so that will take care of the conjugation of the verb. We want to talk a little bit now about a word that we have looked at previously. And just a quick revision because I want to give a similar example of it. And that is the word ma. Now ma. Ma has, so far you have learned that ma could be used as an interrogative. Huh? Interrogative particle. And ma could also use as a negative particle. All right? Interrogative particle or a negative particle. Interrogative example, if you say, ma hatha, question, that's interrogative, it's a question. So, ma hatha, but if it is negative, <coughs> you have a verb like, vahaba, he went. And you put ma in front of the verb, ma thahaba, means he did not go. So ma negates the verb, okay? Ma negates the verb. So it's a negative particle, okay? Whereas here, it's a question, interrogative. So when ma comes before the verb, it's like a negative particle, right? So just like how you have understood this from before, that ma does this, and this is the work of ma, there are other functions of ma. Ma has other functions too, okay? But we haven't looked at those functions, all right? We just want to point out something else, and that is with the letter calf, okay? You have calf, okay? Calf fatha, or you could have the calf kesra. Also, it could have different functions, okay? It can mean your, and it can also mean you, okay? So if it is your, it means it is possessive. I'm going to write that in red, possessive, P-O-S-S-E-S. -S -S. And if it is you, it is? Objective or accusative slash oh. all right. So for some people, they may have some problems with um, these grammatical terms. All right. So to make it easier, what we mean by possessive is that if you have a noun. All right, and then you add the calf to the noun. It gives you possessive case. Example. Okay, example. <coughs> you have the word column. It's a noun. Column is a noun. Column. Okay, so if you want to say your pen, you add the calf to it. So you have kolamu ka or kolamu ki, means your pen. Okay, now the calf is the same calf. Okay, if you have a verb, okay, let me write this a little bit higher so I'll have enough space. If you have calf here again and you have a verb here, Example, if I have, um, let's say for example, sheen, calf, and ro. Shakara. Shakara means he thank. 
to thank someone. Okay? And if I have the calf attached to it, it means you. Shakaraka. This is a verb. Shakara is a verb. So when the calf comes next to a verb, it means you. Okay? And if the calf comes after the nung, it means your. It's possessive. Okay? And of course, the verb can either be perfect tense or it can also be the imperfect tense. Okay? So if I want to say, so shakaraka means he thank you. Uh, if I say, I thank you, I have alif. All right? Ash. Ku, ru, ka means I thank you. All right? I is I thank you. This is a verb, so it's a verb, and then the calf means you. If it is a nung, nung, and then the calf it means your. So we are seeing this one letter, the calf, but it's ka or ki. All right? So the the picture of it is the one picture, the same picture you're seeing, but the function of it is different, different functions, all dependent on the association of the word it is associated with. All right, so I hope that you have understood the function of the calf, right? So if it is the verb, then it is objective or accusative because I, I thank you. This is the object, all right? The object is always accusative or objective case, all right? And this one is possessive case because if you have a noun and then this, the second noun is in the genitive case as we would say, all right? So that's it for, for this, all right? I hope that you have understood this one, all right? So we have basically the calf, and the calf, writing it again for you. Hope you remember it. Here it is noun. Here it is verb. Okay? When it is noun, it's possessive. When it is verb, it is accusative. All right? Or objective. Okay? It's easy to recognize and it is easy to know. All right? I'll give you one example again of them. Uh, let's say, for example, I have, this is a verb, ad, u, ka, wa, us, ra, ta, ka. Now we have two ka. All right, so we have ad, u, ka, wa, us, ra, ta, ka. Okay, so let me highlight the calf now. We have a calf here, and we have a calf here. This here is a verb. This here is a noun. How do I know this is a verb? Because ad'u means I invite. Okay, that's what the, the verb means. And this means family. Okay, usra means family. So usra taka would mean, so if it is a noun, it would mean what? If it is noun, it would mean your. Okay? And if it is a verb, it would mean you. Good? So we have in this, um, let's say, one sentence, we have seen the calf in two words, one with a verb and one with a noun. So when it is with the verb, it means you. When it is with the noun, it means your. Okay? So that takes care of this. Alhamdulillah. All right. So we will stop here um, 
and we take a break inshallah and when we come back we would look at some other examples of some nuns again but then we would look at um, the the cases of the nun inshallah which is the the genitive case but before we do all of that we have to look at the the vocab the quranic vocab so we will look at the quranic vocab first and when we after the quranic vocab we come back and we will continue uh, with some other rules simple rules of grammar and then at the end of it we will have the short arabic conversation all right so we take a break now got into an accident or just need to repair your vehicle then worry no more visit eric alliance on automotive and transport services limited number 141 craignish road princess town they do full professional body works using the latest and best equipment necessary to get the job done right. They also offer transport services. So visit Eric Alliance Unlimited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town, or call 620-2873 or 655-2873. Mali's Restaurant Minimart and Poultry Depot, conveniently located at the corner of Juman Street on Southern Main Road, California. At Maddie's, we specialize in mouth-watering curry foods from Monday to Thursday and barbecue on Fridays and Saturdays. We also have the best prices in dry goods and poultry products, including halal chicken and duck. Open hours every day from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Contact Maddie's Restaurant Minimat and Poultry Depot at 744-1857. Marhaban Bikum brothers and sisters, we are ready for our Quranic vo vocabulary for today. As you are aware, our Quranic vocabulary, seven days per session, which gives us one word per day, inshallah. The first word for today is the word Ali or Allah. Ali or Allah. It means family or blood relationship. Ali or Allah. And this word, my beloved brothers and sisters, occurred in the glorious Quran 26 times. And we would like to look at a reference from chapter 3, verse 33, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى آدَمَ وَنُوحًا وَآلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَآلَ عِمْرَانَ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Indeed, Allah chose Adam and Noah and the family of Abraham and the family of Imran over the world. So you have seen in this ayah, my beloved brothers and sisters, the word Allah mentioning twice in this particular ayah. So it means family and it also means blood relationship. The next word is the word awwal, awwal or al awwalin. Awwal means the first. Awwal, first or former. And al awwalin is the plural. Awalun and awalin. The word awal singular, awalin plural. Awal has been mentioned in the Quran 23 times, whereas al awalin has been mentioned 32 times. So we would like to look at two references for these two words. First reference for the word in the singular form, awal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, in awwala baytin wudi'a linnasi lalladhi bi bakkata mubarakan wa hudan lil alameen. Indeed, the first house of worship established for mankind was that at Bakka, that is Makkah, blessed and a guidance to all of the worlds. 
So you have seen in this ayah the word awwal. It means first or former. The first word, the first house of worship is the one in Makkah. All right? Bakkah was one of the names of Makkah, an old name. And now it is called Makkah. And the next reference we would like to look at is that first reference is from chapter 3, verse 96. And the next reference we would, look to, we would like to look at is from chapter 56, and it is verse 39. And we're looking at the word al-awwaleen, all right, the plural. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قُلْ إِنَّ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ لَمَجْمُوعُونَ إِلَىٰ مِيقَاتِ يَوْمٍ مَعْلُومٍ Say, O Muhammad, indeed the former and the latter people are to be gathered together of a known day. Okay? So, you have the singular and you have the plural. The next word for today is the word ula'ika. Ula'ika. Ula'ika means those. And it is mentioned 204 times in the glorious Quran. And the example we would like to look at at the very beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, that is chapter 2 verse 5, he says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those are upon the right guidance from their Lord, and it is those who are successful. So you have seen in this ayah, the word أُولَٰئِكَ mentioned twice in this one ayah. Okay, the next word for today's vocabulary is the word ayah. Ayah, and the plural is ayat. Ayah, ayat. Ayah has been mentioned 79 times in the glorious Quran, whereas the word ayat has been mentioned 148 times. By itself, ayat 148. But sometimes you would see some additional uh, pronouns like ayatina or ayatihi or ayati. And when you add up all of those, the 148, and you add all of these, you'll get an next 143. Adding the two together, you will have 291 times. So in the plural form, the word ayat was mentioned 291. 91 times, whereas in the singular form it was mentioned 79 times. Let us look at an example of the word ayah, and we want to look at chapter 2, verse 211, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Salbani Isra'ila kam atainahum min ayatim bayyina. Ask the children of Israel how many signs we have given them. Allah gave Prophet Musa and also those people to whom he was sent many, many signs so that they would believe in P Prophet Musa and his message, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet, many of them, they did not believe. And the reference that we would like to look at for the usage of the word ayat, the plural form, we want to look at chapter 2, verse 99, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ وَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِهَا إِلَّا الْفَاسِقُونَ And we have certainly revealed to you verses which are clear proofs, and no one would deny them except the defiantly disobedient. The next word is the word ayyuha. Ayyuha. And ayyuha means O oh, you. It occurred in the glorious Quran 150 times. 150 times the word ya ayyuha occurred in the glorious Quran. 
And the reference we would like to look at is from chapter 84, verse 6, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal insanu innaka kadihun nila rabbika kadahan famulaqi. It basically means, O mankind, you are laboring or toiling towards your Lord with great exhaustion and you will meet him. You would meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it can also be interpreted and you will meet it, meaning that which you are toiling for. You would, also, you would meet it. So the mulaqihi, the he could refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it could also refer to it, meaning that which you are toiling for. The next word is the word bahar. Bahar. And bahar means sea. And it occurred in the glorious Quran 33 times. 33 times the word bahar mentioned in the singular form, of course. And the reference we want to look at is from chapter 7, verse 138 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَجَاوَزْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرِ And we took the children of Israel across the sea. And the last word for today is the word بَعْدَ 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 means after, after. It occurred in the glorious Quran 148 times. 148 times and other times you would see the word ba'da there are some addi additional pronouns coming after like ba'dahu or ba'dahum or ba'daha and if you were to add all of these it will come bring us to a total of 192 times so by itself is 148 and then you add the other the other different ways it occurred another 40 four times and it will bring us bring it to 192 times and one of the reference we would like to look at is from surah al bayyana which is chapter 98 and it is verse 4 in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says and those who were given the, script, the scripture did not become divided until after there had come to them clear evidence. You know, one would feel that, you know, people will be on the wrong path if they do not have evidence and so on. But these people, people of the book, they divided among themselves after the clear signs came to them. All right. So these are the words for today. I hope, inshallah, that you will memorize them, seven words, and you have two words with the singular and the plural. Okay, so inshallah, next week we would look at some other words, and inshallah, we'll try to do a quick revision of some of the words that we have done uh, previously. So until then, take care. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Got into an accident or just need to repair your vehicle? Then worry no more. Visit Eric Allianz on Automotive and Transport Services Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. They do full professional body works using the latest and best equipment necessary to get the job done right. They also offer transport services. So visit Eric Allianz on Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. Or call 620-2873 or 655-2873. Mali's Restaurant Minimat and Poultry Depot, conveniently located at the corner of Juman Street and Southern Main Road, California. At Mali's, we specialize in mouth-watering curry foods from Monday to Thursday and barbecue on Fridays and Saturdays. We also have the best prices in dry goods and poultry products, including halal chicken and duck. Open hours every day from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Contact Maddie's Restaurant, Minimat and Poultry Depot at 744-1857.
ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Welcome brothers and sisters as we continue with the Rusun fil al Arabiya. Now we want to talk a little bit about prepositions. Prepositions are little words and they go with nouns. And it is the same thing with the Arabic language. They are little words and they also go with nouns. As a matter of fact, it is one of the ways of identifying a noun if it, you see a preposition. Prepositions are just few in Arabic. There are just about 17 of them. And we will look at about five of them today, inshallah. And then we want to see what these prepositions would do when they come in contact with nouns. So we have prepositions like this. We have this one is ila. And then we have ala. And then we have min. We have fi, and then we have li. Okay. Ala min fi and li. Now prepositions. Um, we had mentioned and talked a little bit about prepositions in one of the previous uh, programs um, some time ago, a very long time ago. But uh, we are doing the prepositions again because, inshallah, you know, you, it is a revision of what we had done some time before. And at the same time, you would be hearing um, some prepositions and you might hear some of the nouns that you probably would have, acc you know, accustomed listening to them. And you may notice that there is a slight change occurring to those nouns. All right. So... The reason why you would see those slight changes is because of prepositions coming before them. So prepositions really have an effect on nouns. Um, first of all, we look at the meanings of these words. Uh, basic meaning, ila means to, ala means on, min means from, all right? And then we have fi means in or at, and li means for or belonging to, for or belonging to. All right, those are just some of the meanings of these words. So what happens really is that when these pronouns, these prepositions, sorry, these prepositions, they come in contact with nouns, they have an effect on them. And the effect is that it changes the noun from what is called the nominative case to the genitive case. So if I want to say, ila, let's say, ila al-masjid, all right, masjid means the mosque or the masjid, right? Masjid, normally it's masjid do. But because there is a preposition here, okay, this changes to a kesra. Okay, so the dhamma changes to a kesra because of preposition. So ilal masjid would means to the masjid, okay? Of course, um, you would not find the same thing happening in the English language, all right? The word is not really affected. The word itself is not being affected, but it is just the voweling of the word that is being affected, okay? Um, if I want to say um, on the desk, for example, so what is the word for desk? Maktab, all right? Let's say the desk, al Maktab, it's al maktabu, but because there is a preposition here, we change this to a kesra. So instead of al, -mak al maktabu, it will be al maktabi. Al al, and then the fatha goes away. Al al maktabi, al al maktabi, because of preposition means on the desk. And then we have min. All right, let's say, for example, you want to say from let's say from the school or from school, right? So be min, mad, rosa, because of min, it will change to kesra. All right, and then you have a sukun here on the slam and two sukuns coming together. All right, this one changes to a fatha. So it's min al madrasa t. All right? I put it in red. All right? So you're not, don't get too worried. Same thing. 
All right? Now then you have fi. If you want to say in the house, al bait. Okay? So it will be fil by t. Okay? Fil by t. Uh, let's say you have the word ghada. Al ghada means what? Lunch. Al ghada means lunch. And if I want to say for lunch, okay, it will be lil ghada e. What happens to the nang as we're talking about this particular nang here? What happens to the nang when the li comes in contact with a nung that begins with alif and lam, okay, the alif goes away. So this really becomes now, it looks like this now. Li, that's the preposition, and then the next lam, which is this lam here, this alif disappears, okay, it becomes like this. Lil ghada. Okay, so lil ghada e. Okay, so any word that begins with alif lam, if it comes in contact, if the lam comes in contact with it, the alif disappears. So lil ghada means for lunch. Okay, so this is what happens to the nang when a preposition comes in contact uh, with it. All right, it's a simple rule and it is very easy to follow. You just have to remember, as long as you see the preposition, note what happens to the noun. All right? We also want to talk a little bit about something else that puts the noun in what is called the genitive case. This case is called the genitive case. Okay? Genitive case. Now, we want to talk a little bit about what is called the possessive case. And the possessive case, really, is what we would call in the English um, language, in the grammatical terms, is the usage of the apostrophe S or the of phrase construction. So, for example, if I want to say the student's pen, pen, all right? Or we want to say um, the days of the week. Okay? The days of the week. We have the student's pen and we have the days of the week. We want to, to learn how to do this type of construction in the Arabic language. So we are really concerned about the of phrase construction of or the apostrophe S. Okay? Because in the English language, we don't always use of and we don't always use the apostrophe S. Okay? So we would not say like, the pen of the student, that is not the proper way of saying it in the English grammar. And likewise, we cannot say, like for the days of the week, we can't say the week's days. We don't normally say that. So we have to use the of phrase construction. All right? So now how do we um, say this? Or how do we express this in the Arabic language? So basically what we have to do to make it simple for ourselves is that we would use this particular construction for both of them. We would use the of phrase. So we have the noun coming first and then the next noun there. All right? And we have the of. So if I want to say the student's pen, we will have to say the pen of the student. So what is the word for the pen? We have al qalam means the pen. The pen. And then we have of the student, which is at talib Okay? 
So now there are some rules that govern this type of construction. And the rule is that the first nung, because there are two nungs, okay, one nung, two nungs. The first nung does not take alif lam. This is out. Okay? And it does not take tanwin. So normally we know that when a nung doesn't have the alif lam, it must regain its tanwin. So al qalam means the pen, and qalamun means a pen. So qalamun means a pen. But now this rule is telling us no alif lam and no tanwin. It just takes the simple dhamma. All right? So no alif lam. Take away the alif lam. And why it is that the nung does not accept alif lam? Because alif lam makes the nung a definite nung. Okay? But now the nung becomes definite because of its association with this next noun. And this is what made, that makes the noun a definite noun because it is not any noun, it is the student's, right, pen. So, kola mutali b. The second noun takes the genitive case, kesra. So, atali bu now becomes atali b. Kola mutali b, meaning the student's pen, what I said, we have to break it down to the pen of the student. Okay? And the same thing for the days of the week. The days will be ayam, and then we have to remember that the nung does not take alif lam. So what is the word for days? Ayam. Ayam means days. And the week, al usbu. Ayyamul usbu means the days of the week. No alif lam, no tanwin. All right? So basically, the possessive case is about two nungs coming together. They have a very special relationship. Two nungs coming together, forming this union. And they would not allow any thing or any word to come between them because of this special relationship. All right? And that is... They what is called al idafa possessive. All right. So the first nung looks like this: no alif lam, no tanwin, and the second nung must take a kesra. And you would notice in the conversation you would find some of this type of um, construction, like the day of Eid will be yawmul Eid, the day of Jumu'ah, yawmul Jumu'ah T, and so on. All right. Baytul Mudarris and so on. Okay, so this construction, you would observe it in the conversation, inshallah. You will have, you would listen to prepositions and you will also see this type of um, conjugation and you also will also observe the calf that I have spoken about. All right, so we will take um, the end of, this is the end of today's program, but of course it is not um, the last part of the program because we still have the conversation, the very short Arabic conversation, uh, which is really a reinforcement of these simple rules of grammar that I have just explained today. And I hope, inshallah, that you would enjoy the conversation. Okay, take care then until next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Got into an accident or just need to repair your vehicle? Then worry no more. Visit Eric Allianz on Automotive and Transport Services Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. They do full professional body works using the latest and best equipment necessary to get the job done right. They also offer transport services. So visit Eric Allianz on Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. Or call 620-2873 or 655-2873. Mali's Restaurant Minimat and Poultry Depot. Conveniently located at the corner of Juman Street and Southern Main Road, California. At Maddie's, we specialize in mouth-watering curry foods from Monday to Thursday and barbecue on Fridays and Saturdays. We also have the best prices in dry goods and poultry products, including halal chicken and duck. 
open hours every day from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Contact Maddie's Restaurant, Minimat and Poultry Depot at 744-1857. Hello? Abdurrahman Muhammad? Naam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kayfa haluk? Bi khayrin walhamdulillah. Wa ant? Ana ala khayri ma yuram. Alhamdulillah. Ashkuruka ala da'wati ila bayti ammik. Yawm al-eid. Ahlan wa sahlan. الآن أدعوك أنت وأسرتك إلى بيتي يوم الجمعة إن شاء الله متى يوم الجمعة؟ لا سنذهب إلى صلاة الجمعة أدعوكم بعد صلاة الجمعة إن شاء الله وأين بيتك؟ وأين بيتك؟ بيتي في قرية كاروني في شارع المسجد هل تعرف شارع المسجد؟ نعم أعرف شارع المسجد جيدا صليت هناك أمس وقبل أمس أيضا حسنا بيتي قريب من المسجد إذا دخلت شارع المسجد هو أول بيت على يسارك هل بيتك كبير؟ لأن أسرتي كبير كبيرة بيتي كبير والحمد لله أنا أدعوك أنت وأباك وأمك وأختك وجدتك كلكم إن شاء الله أدعوكم وبيتي كبير طيب شكرا سأقول لأبي وأمي وللآخرين إن شاء الله هل تعرف يا أخي عبد الرحمن أنا قابلت طبيبا في بيت عمك يوم العيد من هو؟ هو عمي اسمه كلام الدين هو الطبيب طيب أنا أدعوه أيضا وزوجتي قالت أنها قابلت طبيبة في نفس اليوم يوم العيد من هي؟ هي عمتي اسمها فضيلة هي الطبيبة أدعوها أيضا سبحان الله دعوت كل أهلي جزاك الله خيرا أهلا وسهلا أنا أرحب بكم يا شيخ نسيت واحدا من من أسرتي من قل لي أرنبي هل يمكن أن نأتي به أيضا أرنبك نعم لا بأس لا مشكلة إن شاء الله أحضره وسوف نطبخه ونأكله إن شاء الله أنا أحب أنا أحب لحم الأرنب يا أخي أحضره لا يا أخي سأتركه في في البيت إن شاء الله طيب طيب إن شاء الله طيب إن شاء الله سوف أراك يوم الجمعة إن شاء الله مع السلامة مع السلامة آه